Hi everyone! Today I'm doing something a little bit different, which is to paint in my bullet journal. I know that for some people, bullet journaling is not only a productivity tool, but also a creative outlet. So I thought that since I'm doing this painting already, I could record the process and give you my thoughts on how well this particular journal handles watercolors. For those of you who don't already know, I am using a notebook from Hiraya Journals with 160 GSM paper. I do believe that it is locally made here in the Philippines, so it is definitely more accessible and cheaper than the other brands. I honestly wasn't sure how I wanted to go about this, so I just treated it like any other watercolor commission that I've done so far. Um, first, taping it down to some hardboard uh, left over from previous watercolor pads that I've finished, then taking out some clear water and my squirrel brush to stretch the pages as much as possible. As we wait for the paint to dry, I thought I'd do a little show and tell on what other projects I've been up to. I recently made an Instagram account called doodleinfaith.co. I've been trying to practice my visual note taking. On screen, these illustrations felt pretty underwhelming, but once I printed it out, I felt like, wow, I made these? <laughs> We've also launched a home decluttering project and started selling some of the books that we no longer need. So I did some quick bookmarks in Canva and printed those out just as a cute freebie uh, to thank you for anyone who adopts our books. I also made a quick coffee page for this channel. I used it to upload the cover arts that we've made so far. So if you're interested in that, do go check it out. And if you guys have any suggestions on what other contents you'd like to see from me, uh, definitely comment down below. So now that our pages are dry, we can start the painting process. Here I am just popping up a podcast <laughs> to listen to while I paint and pulling up the reference photo that I chose for this painting. Before we start, I thought it would be helpful to run down the materials that I used for this piece. These are just cheap Sakura paint brushes that come in three. The brushes are made out of synthetic hair, which makes water control easier and is perfect for beginners. For the paints, I use Holbein watercolor. I assume that these are the same colors that you get from a basic set, but feel free to take a screenshot if you'd like. For a more affordable option, you can go for these Prang 8 pan color set. I don't think these paints are light fast, meaning they probably will fade under the sun, but if you're just using them for bullet journaling, I think they're fine. And here are some sample artworks that I have done um, using these paints, just so that you'd have an idea on how it works. When doing watercolor portraits, I have a three-layered approach which tests different aspects of this journal's paper. For the first layer, I am using a lot of water. When doing this technique, I would usually find the paper of the notebooks speckling or ripping apart. But for this journal in particular, there was an even treatment across the spread which meant that the pigments weren't being caught on the paper fibers and there were no random dark spots <laughs> on the piece. Of course, since this journal isn't um, a specialty watercolor paper, the brush strokes are quite evident and there were some patchy spots, especially as you can see on the blue suits of some of the characters. Another factor that took some getting used to was how the shifts of the hues of the paint uh, were happening. There were moments 
that my heart skipped a beat because I thought that I had laid down a darker hue on the skin than I expected. <laughs> but fortunately, it dried a little bit lighter than I had initially put down and I was pretty pleased with the result. For the second layer, this is where I darken up areas such as the hair and the suit to increase the contrast of the piece. I actually tested out um, the colors that I was laying down first on a scrap piece of watercolor paper before I laid it down just to make sure that I was getting the right hue and what I've noticed is that after the first layer uh, the color shifts on the second layer is less evident this is probably because there's less water and more pigment on my brush something I did notice though was um, the blotchy uh, effect of the paint which doesn't do that when I paint on regular watercolor paper so to kind of troubleshoot this what I did was to make a big puddle of the same dark blue on my palette so that I can lessen the brush strokes that I make on the actual piece um, just so that there won't be as much patching uh, if that makes any sense it's much more evident on larger areas like the jacket of San right here <laughs> so essentially what I would do is load up my brush with as much uh, paint as I could and drop that into the area I want to spread it across and kind of find for example like this tie which is a the same color shape that I could extend that droplet into again to lessen the streaks that you could see um, in the larger areas. I found that on the smaller areas like the hair and the face it wasn't as evident um, so yeah it was just the jackets that kind of gave me some trouble. I did regret um, losing the highlights of San's hair. <laughs> I just thought that it was too bright and was still kind of getting used to the paper but I think I did a better job when we get to the last few characters. Light hair is unexpectedly more challenging to paint than darker hair. Most of the people that commission me have black or brown hair, so I never really get the chance to paint blondes. I did really love this green hair here. Um, this is Mingi from uh, the K-pop group 80s and yeah, I liked how there were shades of yellow and greens and blues, um, so that was pretty fun. I did have some trouble achieving very dark darks on this paper. Uh, it felt like it was soaking up the pigments and was kind of absorbing the color with it. So it looked a little bit less saturated than I would usually go for but I don't mind. I think that the end result still looks good. For the logo, I used this Unipin Black Fine Liner in 0 0.5 as well as my handy dandy ruler to make sure that everything was as straight and clean looking as possible. If you've made it this far into the video, you are amazing. <laughs> Honestly, I just wanted to make a spread to commemorate the first world tour of our favorite k-pop group so this video is kind of self-indulgent but i hope that you got something out of it to summarize if you're looking for a journal to do some light watercolor pieces um, to decorate your spreads this is probably good enough keep in mind that there will be 
considerable warping of your pages and it's probably gonna thicken your journal. I also flipped to the back of the page to see if there was any bleed through. I was pretty surprised to find that my handwriting was still intact. I kind of forgot that I wrote something <laughs> before painting this. If you've watched this and decided that you want to purchase a Hiraya journal for yourself, I'll leave a link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below if you guys have any suggestions on what type of content you would like to see from me. If you're also a fellow 80s fan, let me know who your bias is. Like this video and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!